Hi, this is a video to show off the 256 texture mode in Microsplat. Um, essentially, this mode lets you use up to 256 textures on a landscape, um, which is a lot of textures, uh, but it offers some advantages in terms of uh, the actual format used uh, and performance and sort of some free benefits of using this format. It also has some downsides to using this format versus the uh, traditional splat map format. So I'm going to talk about those, uh, but first I'm just going to show you how to convert to this mode. So I have a terrain here in Unity that's already set up with Microsplat uh, using this sort of standard uh, stuff. And to actually uh, turn this into uh, using this new format, what I'll do is go over to the Microsplat material, and I'll change it from being a Unity terrain to being a Megasplat terrain. Uh, it's called a Megasplat te terrain because this is the... Um, the, the original place I introduced this format, uh, this 256 texture format. Um, and so it's sort of historically got that name. Um, and you'll see that it doesn't have any terrain texturing anymore. Uh, that's fine. Uh, what we can do is convert from our old terrain texturing to the new terrain texturing. Uh, to do that, what we need to do is select our terrain and then open uh, the Microsplat Terrain Effects Painter, which actually I already have open uh, right here, and go to the Mega Splat tab. And what we will see is a button here that says Convert from Splat Maps. So if we push this button, it's going to uh, convert from the, um, the Splat Maps that are stored on the Unity Terrain. And what it actually does is in the Microsplat data directory of our project, it makes this new uh, terrain dot or underscore megasplat. My terrain is called terrain, so that's where it gets that name from. It makes this uh, single texture uh, file for the splat mapping. Um, and then I can use the terrain painter here to paint uh, just as I would use the Unity terrain tools to paint. Um, and uh, let me make the brush size a little bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the disk brush, and then you can see I can paint on the terrain here, uh, like I would do with the Unity tools. Now one thing you might notice is that sometimes as I'm painting you'll see things kind of blip in or out. Um, that has to do with the format and how this, the restrictions of this format essentially. Um, the way the Unity format works is that it stores a weight value for every um, uh, surface you're using on your terrain. So if you have you know, 20 different surfaces, uh, then it's gonna, it has to store 20 weights. And the way a shader normally works is it would sample a texture for every four of those. So if you have a 20 terrain, uh, or 20 texture terrain, then it needs five uh, splat map textures for that. Um, and then it would sample all those weights and then figure out what to do from there. Um, so obviously that gets more expensive as you add more textures. If you're only using like four textures on the terrain, then hey, it's one texture, it's not a big deal. And uh, Unity does not compress these textures because it assumes that everything is dynamic. Now there are ways to do that uh, within Microsplat, but, uh, but even so you're dealing with like five uncompressed textures. Uh, in the case of this uh, Megasplat format, it only needs one texture. Uh, and the reason is, is that instead of storing a weight for every uh, texture on the terrain, it just stores two indices. So I'm using texture on this particular pixel, I'm using texture 5 and I'm using texture 42. And then it stores a blend weight between those two indices, like a, a 0 to 1 blend. And so on any given pixel here, you can only have uh, two textures with a blend weight. However, since every pixel, you know, can have different two textures, you can still have hundreds of textures that way on your terrain. And you can see that the, uh, the, uh, the actual texturing here looks very similar to the texturing that was originally on there. Um, you may see some differences when you convert of really subtle blends or soft blends. Uh, and if you're trying to do uh, kind of that unity look where you have the blurry terrains and the textures are all mixed very heavily, then this format does not work well for that. What it works really well for are height map terrains uh, with lots of textures where you're going to blend lots of textures together, but on any given pixel you tend to be rock or grass or, you know, some blend between uh, two textures essentially. And so you can see that like 
hey, for this train, it, it works great. I, I, you know, the visual difference between the two is very uh, mild. Uh, but when you paint, what you'll see is sometimes if I'm painting down a new texture, uh, like if I start painting down uh, this here, uh, when areas where we already have two textures, well, it's got to replace one of them. And so what the auto brush is called uh, right here does by default is replace the lowest weighted texture. Um, and so you can see as we paint this, we get this kind of like popping where the other texture, the, the lower texture pops out and then the other one comes in. And so this can be a little weird to get used to at first, um, uh, but it's just kind of how the system works. Um, you can also paint with a tool on either the bottom or the top layer, so you can kind of work that way if that's more preferable. Um, and then uh, the other thing you can do uh, is you can paint single textures, which is what I'm doing here, um, or you can paint a blend of two textures. So, um, or sorry, the blend mode is just basically like it has a target weight value. So if I set it to uh, 0.5 here, um, as I paint in an area, it's going to uh, try to soften those by blending between the two that are the two indices that are on there. And so that can help you kind of like soften the blending between in areas because the blending can get a little harder on this technique. And then the cluster brush is the most interesting one. Now, if you're familiar with Microsplat, you know it has a lot of anti-tiling techniques, uh, in the te specifically in the texture cluster module, which is all about using variable uh, textures or resampling the existing texture to create kind of a, a non-tiling pattern. And you can see we get some tiling patterns in here on this one. Um, with the Megasplat technique, because you can have hundreds of textures, uh, we can use some of those textures to break up tiling and not have to do those types of techniques in the, cl in the cluster module. And so here what I can see is I currently have this albedo texture in here, and if I add another texture, now I can paint, say, a blend between grass and this uh, rock cliff albedo texture. And I can set up some noise parameters here. Um, and let me just create a bigger brush. So if I paint over this area, and let me just paint really hard so it's uh, quick to see the results. So if you can see it's using the noise to blend between these two. And I can make that noise frequency lower or higher. Um, you know, higher frequency noise is gonna, gonna blend them more often, where if I do something like 0 0.1, then, or maybe 0 0.3 would be better. Then about every, you know, three units, we're, we're changing textures. And so you could use this with a bunch of variations of the same texture produced out of something like substance to, uh, to vary your terrain. And, uh, and you can use these brushes. And this doesn't really cost you anything. I mean, obviously, you have to store the extra textures. Uh, but it doesn't cost you anything in terms of runtime performance. Whereas uh, stochastic uh, sampling and traditional texture clustering in Microsplat require uh, sampling multiple textures per pixel. Um, and so it's a times three on the potential number of uh, textures you're going to sample. So these cluster brushes are a nice way to work because you can, um, and we could soften, you know, the blend between them or whatever. And um, uh, mainly because you can kind of paint and then get this variation for free. And if you're doing procedural terrain and procedural uh, techniques, uh, when you have this many textures available, this is a very nice way uh, to get variation across your terrain without having to pay for, uh, you know, actual texture clustering or stochastic sampling. Um, so that's kind of a, f a nice little thing that's sort of built into this um, this system. Um, what are other things we should talk about? Uh, okay, so let's talk about performance and memory costs. So uh, I pointed out that this only needs one texture. So if we were using Unity's standard uh, workflow, we would need 64 uncompressed splat maps, unless we went through the trouble of compressing them, uh, to be able to paint 256 textures. So that's a ton of data, it's a ton of sampling, and that's why uh, I cap Microsplat at 32, because even at 32, you're, you're looking at eight textures per terrain. So this technique is still just one texture and one texture sample versus having to do 64. Um, so that's a big uh, performance win. Uh, once it samples that texture, it goes through the rest of the micro, micro splat uh, sort of optimization uh, system. 
So it's still only going to sample four textures per pixel, and then it's still going to do things like uh, static weight culling and um, those types of techniques. So um, this ends up being faster than it was in Megasplat, which is great. Um, this workflow is available for both meshes and um, uh, terrain painting. Uh, I do not have a painter for the vertex-based workflow. Uh, I don't know if I'll make that. Maybe I'll make it one day if there's a real need for it. Uh, the main reason I haven't is because most of the people who are uh, using this format or have wanted this format from contracting and things like that, it's because they were doing their worlds procedurally, and so they would uh, stamp all that data on uh, the mesh itself. Um, so if you're using the vertex-backed workflow and you're doing some proceduralism, uh, the actual um, format is described uh, for the vertices, uh, and it also supports painting scatter um, and painting, um, <coughs> I think, uh, snow weights and, um, and some other, oh, and the effects channels for like um, lava and streams and things like that. Um, so it's pretty powerful. You know, if it makes sense for your project or not is another thing. Uh, one thing is that you cannot, uh, even though you, can pr you could compress uh, Unity's splat maps, now they don't... Um, uh, they don't do that by default, but there are ways to, to do that manually. Um, you can't compress this map because the data would get uh, messed up from it because you're storing indices that have to be exact. Um, so, you know, if, you're, if your primary concern is performance and you're doing like an 8 texture or even a 16 texture game, you're probably better off sticking with your traditional workflow uh, because you could compress those splat maps and uh, get back that memory and that would... Uh, basically, four compressed splat maps is equal to one uncompressed uh, splat map. So, um, so yeah, so there are other ways to achieve that. Once you start getting into high texture counts, uh, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and, uh, and it may make sense in other cases just because you're only sampling one texture instead of four. So there's some, some sort of benefits and trade-offs there. Um, yeah, that's uh, basically the module. Um, I don't think it's a module that a ton of people, like that the average game needs. Uh, I think it's more a module that, um, for special cases, has some real uh, potential value. Uh, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, this works with all the, you know, standard techniques. Um, probably the main downside of using this format is that you lose interoperability with all the existing terrain tools out there. Right, like Unity can't paint in this format. Um, you can't, uh, you know, although on newer Unity I might be able to get it to do that. But like if you're texturing with, you know, uh, some other software, you're texturing your terrain or you're doing things with reading the splat map data, like from Unity's data, well, that's all going to be invalid, right? Because you're using a different format. Uh, the other thing that I should probably note is that I don't destroy the data that's on um, the original terrain. So, like, for instance, if I switch this back to Unity terrain, <coughs> uh, we'll see now it's, it's using the Unity splat maps, right? And so those edits I did were, are now gone uh, because we're back to using the Unity splat maps. Uh, what that does mean is that this, this data is still going to get included in the build uh, when you're in Megasplat format. So uh, if you are committed to using this format and you are, you know, using that workflow, uh, at some point if you've come from, you know, some other tool for texturing and then convert it into Megasplat format, uh, what you want to do is go over here and basically um, go onto the terrain and remove its terrain layers so that it doesn't have any of these textures on it because it still has references to the original textures and it still has those splat maps uh, that Unity creates and so we don't want it to create any of that data. So you'd probably want to clear this stuff out um, and that will save you some uh, some memory in your runtime. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that shows everything off and if you have any questions, find me on Discord.